Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. The earliest adopters of XRP are going to make the most money. And, and look, I understand that there are going to be people listening that maybe just joined crypto. And as I record this, mind you, XRP is just a little over $1. And uh, you might be thinking, ah, oh, gosh, I am, I am late to the party. Oh, my gosh, how am I ever going to make my Moon Lambo money? Well, consider this just, to, just for a little perspective. I've been in crypto since November of 2017. Now, I was not one of the very first purchasers of XRP, but um, I, I was able to get it. Uh, my first purchase of XRP, I believe, was uh, I believe it was 21 cents. And had I been in the space just earlier that year, if I could have gone back just you know 11 months, beginning of the year, uh, I could have purchased it for half a penny. So you might say, okay, wait a minute, this thing just went from half a penny to uh, to 21 cents. And uh, and so that's that's a dramatic jump up in price, right? But, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where when it, when it comes to crypto, if you just understand that these markets are just supremely illiquid, it doesn't take a ton of money coming in to get the prices to jump up that much higher. And so... I still think that that XRP is going to go substantially higher than it is today. And look, to be clear, I, I don't have a financial background. I am not offering financial advice. And you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I just like making YouTube videos, talking about this stuff just as a fun hobby. That, that's all I'm doing. But um, but I, I do happen to very firmly believe that, which is why I've been so engaged with the space for the last three and a half years. Uh, like you perhaps feel, I, I'm going to guess... Uh, you may feel like you've found something before the vast majority of the rest of the world. That, that's how I feel. I still feel like that after three and a half years. And frankly, if the rest of the world already agreed with me, I think it would be too late. Because there will come a point in the future where I think trading cryptocurrencies is going to be a, a, about as exciting as trading precious metals like gold or silver. Because the, the, most of the money, at some point in the future, most of the money that will ever get into the crypto space... It's going to be there eventually. Right now is not the case. Right now it's the case that less than 1% of financial institutions across the entire world hold any crypto. Less than 1% and we still have, a, we already think about this, less than 1% institutions, we have a multi-trillion dollar asset class. Well, technically it's a little below the, the multi part just because we had this recent crash, but it did get up to 2.5 trillion and I still think the best days are ahead. So I think you kind of get where I'm going with this. But, um, you know, it, it's not the case that all of this is suddenly apparent to the moment this technology is created. Uh, th think about Bitcoin, what it's had to battle the last 12 years. Think about what it's like to hold XRP in an environment where uh, Bitcoin maximalists think that you're the enemy because you're support supporting a cryptocurrency that is helping the legacy financial system. Uh, which, which, by the way, that in and of itself makes, makes me kind of chuckle a bit because they like to call XRP the banker's coin. Um, while also simultaneously saying uh, banks don't use it. So I'm like, wait, it's a banker's coin, but banks don't use it. I don't, I don't get what you're trying to tell me here. But it's funny now because you actually are in a world where you've got the likes of Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Like They're, they're all on board here now. And all sorts of uh, you know, uh, uh, inst you know, institutions from the, the world of legacy finance. Um, and so I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think that's a dirty thing. But I, I do think that along the way, it's very clear we, we just have tremendous hurdles, but you know what's on your screen right now? Do you want to know what this is? I came across this thanks to uh, Matt Hamilton, who is a Ripple employee, who tweeted this out. He wrote, man, the visualization from, uh, I'm sorry, the visualization that at short the FOMO uh, created really is amazing right now with all the activity going on with the XRP ledger. So many people moving value about. And so this is a visual representation of uh, all of the X XRP transactions happen here. Right? You're just talking about, these are real-time fiat trades. And you can see it's scrolling very quickly on the right side of the screen. I just thought it was a cool visualization. You can kind of twirl the uh, twirl the, the globe around here. Let's see how quick I can get this thing to fly around. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna fling it with my mouse. Let's go now. Yeah! Look at that bitch go. That's good, that's a good spin. See if you can do a better spin than me. I'm an adult child, I know. But <laughs> but look, but look to illustrate all this, so this all this this didn't exist a decade ago. The XRP ledger, the final version, it's been around for about eight and a half years. And it, it is globally adopted. 
And it still is the case that if you think that XRP is going to be something in terms of uh, how many humans are on the planet, you're in the extreme minority. But if we continue to be right, and we certainly have been, if you just, well, any XRP holder has been for the last eight and a half years, what do you think this is going to look like as more money ultimately continues to plow in, especially considering that we're actually in a bull market right now? And so to me, this is tremendously exciting, which is why I kind of just wanted to say congratulations to if you're here and you're paying attention. Um, there's no way to know for sure, and I get it. Investing in crypto is risky. I'm not pretending like it's not. It's very volatile. Okay, super duper, but I'd have trouble sleeping at night if I didn't have the, the risk exposure that I have uh, to, to XRP. And I think it's going to be worth substantially more in the future. But again, all this is not evident. And I wanted to have this, some of this is kind of comical. I wanted to highlight some things just to kind of drive the point home that, yes, it's annoying to put up with all this. And it's a little bit more scary when we do, when, when you do have less certainty. But when there's less certainty, that's where the opportunity lies, you know. And so, yes, you are taking on more risk. It's, but it's, it's about what are you willing to have as your risk reward exposure? What, what are you willing to take on? Right. And so have you guys seen this website? This is the Bitcoin obituaries website. It's a website that tracks all of the, uh, that they can find anyway, all the articles and videos and blogs that they can find uh, insisting that Bitcoin is dead or is about to die, basically. Bitcoin is, and so it's funny, they write here, Bitcoin has died 416 times. <laughs> it's obviously not dead, but it is comical. And you can see these these headlines there, they are, like the, the, the narrative is still there. So eventually, like as time passes, the more time passes, the more it becomes clear that people that say Bitcoin's going to zero and crypto's going to zero, uh, it becomes more clear that they're wrong. The same is true of XRP. Um, here, here's an article from just May 20th, several days ago. It's titled, Bitcoin and Ethereum are dead. Uh, here's another one. This is from May 21st. Why Bitcoin is going to zero. My, my, my friends, if it were like a decade ago, okay, maybe a little bit more reasonable here. But uh, look at this from February, uh, February 24th this year, Bitcoin will death spiral. Uh, here's another one uh, from March 4th. The fundamental value of Bitcoin is nothing. So like, these are people, whoever these are, like these are people that just don't get it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not going away. And so for us, I mean, if you're listening, I'm assuming you've already figured out why to this point. But we're dealing with this in the XRP community too. Have you seen this website? FUDBingo.com, standing for Fear, Uncertainty, Doubt, um, fudbingo.com. This is created by Vuitze Wind, who is uh, the creator of a number of things, including the XRP Tipbot. Uh, he's the creator of XRPL Labs, which is found, uh, funded through uh, the development arm of Ripple, actually. So uh, his company is separate. Uh, there's called XRPL Labs, but funded through Ripple X. Uh, back when that initially happened, it was, it was known as Spring. Uh, but uh, they rebranded from Spring to Ripple X recently, anyway. And so he created this website because there's so much nonsense, so many f false narratives out there uh, about XRP. And so he just debunked some of the most major ones out there. And so this website's actually been out for a few years. Um, and, and so here you can see one here. XRP is not a real cryptocurrency. And so you can write, not true. So you just click on it. You can find out why. Uh, Ripple can freeze your coins. Um, XRP is for banks and banks will die. Uh, the XRP token will not be used. Ripple owns 99% of the coins. XRP is stupid because it can't be mined. And just goes on and on and on. And so th the fact that all these people are saying all this nonsense, it can be irritating dealing with that on social media. I, 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 I will cede that point. But if it were widely understood and accepted that, no, of course XRP is useful. Look, it's used the, the world over for it's a bridge currency and X number of other use cases. If that, if that were already the case, uh, then you'd be too late. And so here you are. Um, even if you're purchasing XRP at $1, I just suspect if you were to fast forward another 10 years, I'm just arbitrarily choosing that number. Just, just, just a, It's way out there, right? Another 10 years. I'd be willing to bet that just like I can look back and when, like when I jumped into crypto in November of 2017, just like when I saw, oh my gosh, you all you people that uh, bought when, when it was only five cents, that XRP was only, or I'm sorry, five cents, half a penny, because it was half a penny. Uh, earlier in 2017, I was just thinking, my gosh, I wish that I had known about it. I wish I had been in sooner. I didn't even know it existed. I was thinking that. And, um, I, I, you know, I think that there are people, all sorts of people that bought in that range, too, that have been saying that maybe you're starting to feel a little bit less now that the, the, like that, now that the price has gone up to $2, even though there's been a recent retracement. So currently around, around $1. But I'm willing to bet people, there are people out there listening right now that have that same feeling like, oh, my gosh, 
Uh, buying at one dollar. I wish I wish I would have known it back when you did Moon Lambo back when you got it at twenty one cents. Although frankly, it wasn't that long ago that it was in that range. <laughs> frankly, just several months ago, it was still down at seventeen cents. But this, this is the same thing that you heard time and again with with Bitcoin. Uh, it, it just whatever the current time is, it just it's like people no longer think that positive stuff can happen after whatever now is. But <laughs> it's always been the case for twelve years that Bitcoin has been trending upward. All right. And XRP's just moving along with the rest of the asset class to this point. And as long as it continues to sufficiently be adopted, solve a real world problem, I don't think it's going to go away even when uh, we have sufficient maturation to where uh, individuals, investors, especially institutional money, because uh, you'll get to the point where they are parsing out sufficiently differences between coins. But as long as XRP continues to be functionally useful, that's good. So that that's what I'm counting on here. But uh, you're here first. You're here before everybody else recognizes this. So uh, let's hope that it continues to be the case that uh, people the world over rally around XRP. And to this point, that is the case, which is why, again, I highlighted this, this, uh, this website here with this graphical representation showing the planet and all of the real-time transactions of XRP occurring right this second. I think it's cool as hell. Uh, but... <laughs> This is this is the price you have to pay if you're going to be in crypto right now. So uh, take a look at this headline from Coindesk. This is from May 27th of last year, 2020. And I remember covering this. But, but here, here is the headline. Goldman Sachs says, cryptocurrencies are not an asset class. And so I just, I completely tore the concept to shreds a year ago when this came up. And, and part of what, I'm not going to do that again in this video, but that's not the purpose of this video, but... I will share with you, one of the things I said is that Goldman Sachs, they're only going to have this position until they find a way to make money from the cryptocurrency asset class, and then that will not be their position. Because think about it, if money's going to flow somewhere that is not something to, to something that they are offering, why would they want it to go there? Why would they have a sunny, shiny narrative before they've got, uh, before they've got a reason to, to share such a message, even if they believe it? And so I think they said stuff that they didn't even believe. And, and I communicated this a year ago. I said, you just wait until Goldman Sachs says that, uh, uh, you know, it, it, Bitcoin and crypto, it is an asset class. Because when that happens, that means they're making money from it. And what do you know? From Yahoo News, from May 24th, 2021, not even quite a full year later, Bitcoin is officially a new asset class, says Goldman Sachs. <gasps> Well, what do you know? It's an investable asset class now, and now they're jumping into, and they're going to be making money from it, and how about that? Is any of this surprising? And so I just wanted to share with you in a general sense, like, like this is the price that we're going to have to pay if we want to be in crypto right now, and it can be scary, and there is less certainty, uh, admittedly. There, there's greater risk investing now than if you were to jump in a decade or two or three from now when there are clear winners. But once those winners are clear, oh my gosh, the opportunity for the, this, these crazy asymmetrical returns relative to any other asset class, they'll be gone. I want to be here during the volatility. And that does mean that I've been holding XRP for three and a half years, and almost the whole time it's been uh, trading down or sideways. Most of the time, my investment for the last three and a half years has been down or sideways. And none of that is a factor in me deciding whether or not I would continue to hold XRP. My bet hasn't changed. Even after the XRP bubble popped along with the rest of the market uh, years ago, after the last tremendous rally, uh, I, my bet was that at some unknown point in the future, even if it took, would take years, that XRP would, again, at some point, hit its all-time high and enter a new realm of price discovery. And I still believe that. My bet has not changed. All the price action in between does not matter to me in, in that sense. I still track it because it's interesting to know I got skin in the game. I want to be aware of what's happening in the crypto world at large and the XRP ecosystem. Yes, so always going to talk about that, but it's not going to be something good or bad news. It's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be something that's, um, especially, well, let's just say the negative price action. That's not going to be anything that will cause me to change my, my position and my plan. Once we have sufficient upward price action, yes, then I'll start to sell some along the way. Fine. And I don't care how long it takes, though. I mean, I care a little bit. But <laughs> even, even, if it takes, even if it takes a while, I'm still just going to be patient. Because as Warren Buffett said, and he's talking about the stock market, but it's true of crypto. He said, the stock market is a mechanism uh, for transferring wealth from the impatient to the patient. 
I think that makes sense. I think there's data indicate that there's plenty of truth to that. And so I'm going to outpatient anyone else. Even you listening to this. Yes, even you. I will outpatient you. Because if I'm wrong, I will still, I will ride this biatch to zero. I really will. I really mean that. Uh, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I really do not think that's going to happen. Um, so anyway, I, I just I just thought I'd share that message. Again, congratulations if you're here. Um, kudos to you for researching this stuff when most of the world, uh, frankly, has no idea how any of this works. If, they, if they've even heard of it, uh, you are on the cutting edge and the rest of the world, frankly, is not. And so... Uh, Let's just see where this all takes us. It's a fun ride. It's a, you can't well if you, if you don't think it's fun what, during the downtime is fine, but you have to admit it's exciting, right? I think so. I think it's very exciting. I'm happy to be here, but uh, I think it'll all ultimately be worth it in the end. But I will wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo.